Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. God is great and he is worthy to be praised. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 If you're here this morning, then God allowed you to be here. So we ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, God watched over us while we slept. So we ought to give him a praise. If you're here this morning and we, you're thanking the Lord, you ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. In all things, at all times, we give God a praise because he is worthy. Amen? Amen. He is worthy. And he allows, to see, uh, allows us to see things beyond our natural eyes. He allows us to just feel his presence and to see him in the spirit. So we thank you, God. Yeah for all that you are doing. Amen. We're hope opening him is going to be uh, 483, leaning on the everlasting arms. Then we're going to move into our scripture and our, uh, our prayer. Amen. 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 What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning on Jesus. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Verse 3, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have peace complete. With my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Hallelujah. 
We'll have prayer by Reverend Felicia and, no, scripture by Reverend Felicia and prayer by Sister Robertine. Amen. 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 I'll be reading Psalms 24 in its entirety. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek Thy face, O Jacob, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour. That draws me from a world of care and bids me as thy father's throne. your name, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that we are counted among the living today, dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you for one more day we Thank can come God. to worship in the sanctuary, dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy towards us, dear God, because you say, new every morning is your mercy and your grace. Amen. Father God, we ask forgiveness of our sins collectively and individually, dear God. We ask that you cover every member, family member represented here, dear God, in every household. Jesus. Father God, we thank you that we can always bring our cares to you, dear God. Yes, sir. When the world, it says when your brother and sister forsake you, dear God, you are there. Father God, this day, we ask for ears to hear your word today, Lord dear God. Jesus. We ask your anointing over the messenger, dear God. Father, this day, we thank you, dear God. We ask, dear God, for covering for anyone who is on their way here, dear God. And we just praise your name. We magnify your name because you're worthy to be praised, dear God. And we do this so the rocks won't cry out, dear God. Jesus. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you. Praise your name, O oh God. Glory you are worthy to be Hallelujah. praised, dear God. Hallelujah. And I seal this prayer in Jesus' precious name. And know the name but yours. Amen. Amen. Lord, we glorify you, and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, it's a privilege, I'm gonna lift you up. 
Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, wisdom, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, it's a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, it's a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you. What is he, Lord? Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. One more time. Glory, honor, mighty, Power worthy Jesus, I'm gonna lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty power worthy Jesus, I'm gonna lift you up. 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 Hallelujah.
said, we need to look at that. When we look at ourselves and who created us, he created us for greatness. He created us for positive things to happen. Hallelujah. In our life. Hallelujah. So why do we spend so much time on the negative? Hallelujah. We were created to praise God and give him the glory. Amen. It's in us. He created us to do that. Amen. Life will be so much easier and peaceful when the trials and tribulations come. Amen? Because even through the bad times, even through those times that we cannot see our way, we can praise our way through. Hallelujah. And know that God is in control and he is gets the glory and we're going to get the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Amen. We were created to do that. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 there's something about that name. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We greet you in the precious name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus the Christ, King of King, Lord of Lords, Mary's little baby, the Messiah, the soon coming King. Amen. We're happy to see each and every one of you here this morning. Are you glad to be here? Well, tell the Lord, thank you. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to greet one another, amen. We welcome our viewers this morning. We thank you for choosing Love Alive Ministries to worship with. Amen. Amen. So we're going to break out and Greet each other with a holy hug and with our fellow sticks. Amen. Amen.
child of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Before we move on, we have a young man with us today, Brother Malcolm. We want to welcome you to Love Alive Ministry. And Chris Jr., God bless your bones for bringing him into church today. Hallelujah. Also, today's a very special day for a very special lady. Today is Sister Agnes' birthday. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So glad you're here. Amen. And we're going to give God to go. Look, I put my tennis shoes on. I told you yesterday I'm going to have a birthday dance with you, right? So I put my tennis shoes on. So anytime we get ready, want to praise the Lord and dance a little bit, let me know. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're going to move right along. It is tithes and offering time. We have several ways of giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't get upset or depressed about giving unto the Lord. He created you. He made you to be a giver. Amen. Because he is a giver. Amen. He is a provider. And he wants us to be just like Christ. Amen. So prepare your hearts and your mind to give unto the Lord. Thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. It's tithes and offering time, everybody. Our time to give back to the Lord just a portion of what he has given to us. Now we can give back accordingly. I'll have my left side go first, and then we'll have the right side. So come on, come on. for this offering. We thank you for those that were able to give and those that had it in their heart to give, but maybe not the means, Lord. Bless them, Lord, that they can give to their hearts to de desire and to their hearts content, Lord. They can give freely to you just so that we can help build up your mighty kingdom, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. receive the word of God this morning? Are you ready to be spiritually fed this morning? Amen. The word will be coming from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Gordon S. Wright, Jr. But before he comes, the praise team will render in a selection. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name. For his great name, surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in 
Trust you, Lord. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever. Amen. God is good and worthy of all praise and honor. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let us turn into the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. When you have it, stand up. If you don't have a Bible, just go ahead and stand up. Amen. God bless you, Chris. God bless you and welcome, Malcolm. Amen. And to all the January birthdays. Amen. I will come to your party. Amen. Just let me know when. <laughs> and I'm into Caesar salads now, so I'm not a, not a heavy date. Amen. <laughs> so I will come to your <laughs> party. Just let me know when. Amen. Numbers 14, uh, verses 1 through 3. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for your word. Your word is meat unto our souls. 
Help us to be obedient unto your word and help us to stay focused. We thank you for all things. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, thanking you for the Holy Spirit. We say amen. Amen. And for a topic, we're going to use stay focused. Stay focused. Amen. Stay focused. It's said that Harriet Tubman, when she would be conducting, leading people to freedom, she would have them stay focused. And she had a line that I'm going to paraphrase a bit. It would say, you'll be free or die. Amen? Either you're going to be free or you're going to die, which means no turning back. You got to stay focused and go forward. She knew that the worst thing that can happen to any person is fear. She wanted them to fear her more than their adversary so that they would follow her all the way. The power of fear is amazing. It can cause us to hate. It can cause us to pass out, lose focus. It can cause us to suffer needlessly as we just lose all of our hope. Fear can be a terrible monster God wants us to fear him, but not in the same way. He wants us to reverence and respect him enough not to fear anybody or anything. It's in John, 1 John, chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. Listen to this part. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you are a Christian and Jesus is your Savior and the Father, you accept the Holy Ghost, you accept. You don't have a right to fear because he's saying my love overcomes the fear. So you don't have a right to fear anything or anybody. And if you ever want to really put somebody on the run that is your adversary, love them. Show them love. Show them love. They don't know how to respond to love. They're ready for a punch. But they don't know how to respond to love. Show them love. That's the only way you can stay focused. Don't you know fear came to distract you? Fear came to get you off track. But you've got to stay focused. Just think about it. All of those plagues led by God during the day and night. Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea, fed by the Lord's hand, and yet they still feared. Had God with them, and they still feared. Some of us say, only if God would come down and speak to me, I would know how to move. But some of us would be afraid if we heard his voice. And the Israelites still feared, and yet God says, stay focused. Stay focused. God gave them the land of Canaan, 
a land full of resources, a rich land. Amen? But it was not an empty land. So they rejected. Why? Because there's always someone talking negatively when you're about to come into your promise. That's one way to know that you are about to come into promise or you are about to be attacked is when someone just starts to say all sorts of negative things just to keep you right where you are. But stay focused. Stay focused. One of the key things that God did was he told them, I have given you this land. Now, when God states he has given you the land, no matter what's going on with the land, it's yours. Whether you have to go in amongst giants or all sorts of people, it doesn't matter. He promised. He said, I have given you the land. My words are not empty. My words are full of life. So you accept what I've given you. How am I going to accept it? Doesn't matter. You just stay focused on the Lord. How do you remain focused in the midst of a strange land? Well, you got to study. You've got to read his word. Amen. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. You've got to study. It's no secret. Do you know that there are no smart tricks? You know, we think some people are just naturally smart. There are geniuses throughout the world. But we look at other nations and we think that they are just naturally smart. And they are not. They study. You must study his word. You've got to remember who he is, what he has done, what he will do, and what he is doing in your life. Memory is a good thing to have. But sometimes it's good to write down so that you can create a history with the Lord. You've got to study. See, when you study the word, what you do is you set the atmosphere that you're in. You change the atmosphere that you're in. You let his word minister to you the promises Will you study or will you say, I'm tired, I got to go get my hair cut, I'm tired, I got to go to the beautician, that's enough, I spent an hour in church, I got to go now, but will you study his word? Then after you study his word, if you want to stay focused, you've got to pray. So that when you pray, you Repent and intercede on behalf of someone else. Now, when you pray next, after you repent it and intercede it, you need to be thankful unto him. Thankful unto him who is your Savior, your God. Then you need to request his guidance with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. You got to be all in. Either you're all in or you out. You either all in or you are out. You either all in or you are out. You've got to be all in. Then I need, I need some real people here. I need some people that's willing to listen. No matter how long it takes, you sit still and you listen to the Lord. You know, Jacob wrestled all night long. Why? He wanted to be blessed. I used to say we cry all day long, but we don't even do that. 
we end it quick. Amen. If it don't happen right away, oh well. I need some people that will listen to the Lord. Listen to his voice. And I want you to realize something I did not say in this prayer. I didn't say that you request anything. I said you need to repent. You need to intercede on someone's behalf. And you need to be thankful for who God is. Focus, 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 Israelites. What's long? What's wrong? Same thing that happens to us. We forget to worship him. Worship is our time to tell God about himself. Worship is our time to let God know that we know him. You don't focus on other things during worship. You focus on the Lord. You don't focus on your problems. Worship. I need some true worshipers. See, true worshipers are not situational. Let me explain what situational means. As long as things are going well, you worship the Lord. But the minute things don't go well or are in disagreement with your thought pattern, you can stop worshiping the Lord. You even get angry with him and repeat the history of the Israelites, and you begin to say, oh, you should have just let me die. You should have just let me quit at that other situation I was in. I don't know why you delivered me only to bring me to this place. You've got to worship the Lord with all your might, with all your soul. You know, I like what the psalmist said in 112, 7. He said, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You know what that means? We don't fear. We conquer. And we move forward trusting in the Lord. Well, Israelites, what happened? Did the Lord destroy you? No, he had mercy. Same way he has mercy on us. And some of us have to go around the long way to get home. Amen? But don't you know, if God promised it to you, he will bring you to it. So why did the Israelites have to go around for 40 years? Some of them had to die. Because they would have brought a sickness into the new land. What was that sickness they would have brought into the new land? One of fear. You can't go into the new land with old stuff. You got to go into the new land with new stuff. So God needed some people that would totally trust him. And there were two, two from two tribes that totally trusted him. But the rest, there was fear that they spread, the spies that were sent into the land. They didn't tell the people. They told the people, hey, there's richness, but there are giants over there. They didn't tell them that, hey, but God said we can have the land. Only two of them, Caleb and Joshua, only two stood. God will always have a remnant in the midst of your problems. Amen? There will be a remnant to help you stay focused. But I want to know, are you willing to follow the leader? And can I tell you, I'm the shepherd here, but I'm not the leader. I'm following a leader. The leader I'm following is Jesus Christ. Amen? And it's the same leader that I want you to follow. Amen? Yes, I do hold myself up to a high regard to lead you, not lead you astray, but to the Lord. But if I slip, I'm going to be telling you this. Go. Go. I'm getting up. Pray for me to get up, but I'm getting up. You keep going. Follow Jesus. Too many people have built up so many things on mankind that when mankind lets them down, they take it as if Jesus has failed. 
and he has not failed, he is still leading. Pray for me. I pray for you. Let's pray for one another, amen, that we can stay focused. And why do we need to stay focused? Because the leader is taking us somewhere. He's taking us to a wealthy place. He's taking us to abundant life. He's taking us home if we will just follow him. Can you stay focused? Can I tell you sometimes the easiest way to stay focused is to close your eyes, block out everything that's going around you. See, we think people who can't see are at a disadvantage. But I believe they have an advantage that we haven't received yet. We look at them as having a difficulty. I look at them as having a great, great, great advantage. The hearing becomes very sensitive. The smelling becomes really sensitive. Touch becomes really sensitive. Those things that we take for granted become really sensitive. And I just want to know, will you focus on the Lord? Will you stay focused on him to go all the way? Will you stay focused on him when things are just breaking out against you? Will you? Will it be you? Will you stay focused on him? Or will you fall away? I ask that you choose this day. But I want to let you know if you're chosen, if you say I've accepted him as my personal savior, he doesn't leave you as you go along the way. Sometimes we pull over into a pit stop, a rest area, and he waits for us to get back going. In our life, sometimes we just stop. I just need a break. I just need a few minutes. And he waits for us. When the Israelites were wandering 40 years, whew, they was in a rest stop before they could move forward to the promised land. But you don't have to wander 40 years. You can be delivered and move forward right now. It's your choice. What do you choose? Do you choose fear or do you choose love? If I told you fear was from the adversary, would you know to choose love? If I told you that love conquers hate, would you know to choose love? If I told you that love makes you perfect, would you know to choose love? Will you choose love? It's time. It is time. It's time for us to do, all of us, to do what Chris has done today. What has he done today? That's what you're asking. Amen. He reached out and brought someone with him. He didn't preach to him. He just said, Come on and go with me. I'll give you a ride. Come go with me. That's all the Lord requires of us. But us that are here need to share love. And I got to tell you, did you see the love that was being shared and the smile that was coming across his face as love was being shared? Share the love of Jesus Christ now. The doors of the church are open. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, come. Come unto Jesus right now. Now is your time. You're either with him or you're not. It's real simple. If you say, well, I'm not bad, but I haven't accepted Jesus, you need to come. He loves you. He sent his love to us while we were yet sinners. He 
He just wants you to be part of the body and be working. Will you come? If you say, hey, I'm part of the body, I'm just paralyzed right now. He can get you moving again. You ever heard of electric shock? Sometimes that don't feel good, amen? But that tend to get you moving, amen? He'll do what it takes to get you moving because he loves you. Some of us don't do what it takes to get somebody moving because we don't love them, amen? Not that much. We love them, but not that much. But sometimes you have to give a little jolt to get people moving. Will you come? He loves you. Now is your time. Come to Jesus while you can. It's easy. It's easy. You get to cast your burdens down. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him and live. You get to become a victor, not a victim. You get to overcome everything that you are going through. Oh yes, you might have to fight, but you get to overcome. Hey, I'm finding out you got to fight to get older in life. It's a fight, amen? It just don't happen. When I was younger, it felt like it just happened, like it was privilege. As I get older, I'm like, man, it's a fight. You got to be tough to get older, amen? Amen? Why don't you come to Jesus while you can? He loves you. If virtually you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, why don't you let us help you find a church home? We welcome you here to Love Alive Ministries, but there are many great places that you could worship. We would have you here, but we would just want to help you. Is there one? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. Help us to stay focused on you, not to be situational Christians, but to love you all the way. Help us to listen more than we speak. Help us to follow you. Help us to study your word. It begins and ends with studying your word. Help us to worship you, that we get to know you better and know who you are and tell a dying world. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We thank you for the healings that you have provided. We thank you for the opportunities, the challenges that you have given us in this life. And we know that we are more than overcomers through you. We cannot fail because you have not failed. And if you promised us, it's got to come to pass. Now, Father, bless those under the sound of my voice. Bless those to be a blessing unto someone else, Father. And if someone has accepted you as their personal Savior, we thank you and we shout now, hallelujah. For we know the angels in heaven rejoice, so we rejoice right here and now. Now, Father, may the grace and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these people henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen, 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 amen.